Now, when we do calculations in chemistry, we have to pay attention to the number of digits each measurement is known to contain. And at the end of the day, if we add and subtract and multiply and divide, we will see sort of a weakest link rule. The worst measurement will affect how well we can write our final answer. So imagine you make three measurements and two of them are amazing and one of them sucks. It's terrible. It turns out that terrible measurement will affect how well you know the answer when you calculate it. So we always be able to be a little bit careful. If you're paired up with a lab partner and your lab partner measures the volume and you measure the mass and you do a really good job with the mass and they are terrible at the volume, your final calculation will be terrible because the number of significant figures at the end of the day is limited by your worst measurement. So how do you know how many significant figures a measurement has? Well, before we said it was the number of certain digits plus one, but uh, if you are given a measurement, you have to be able to determine and count the number of significant figures to apply these rules. And so we're gonna go through the four rules, and there's a couple of extra ones that we'll see later on. One is that any digit that is non-zero is significant, so non-zero non-zero, sorry, digits are significant. I'm just going to write a little check mark there. Um, for example, if we had something like 382.7 centimeters, uh, we would take all those digits that were not zeros, the 3, the 8, the 2, the 7, and we would say that every one of those is counted as significant. So we would have four significant figures or four sig figs or just four SF in this problem. Uh, and as we go on, we will sort of apply the rules one at a time. Uh, the second kind of digit we have is a zero, and there's three places for a zero to be. So if it is a leading zero, it is never counted. So for example, if you have a number like 0 0.03827 kilograms, then those leading zeros there, they don't count at all. So I'm gonna put a little X mark above the ones that aren't significant and a little check mark above the ones that are. So just like the one above, uh, this measurement has four significant figures. Uh, the other place a zero can be is in between non-zero numbers. We call this a captive zero. And uh, if I can spell captive, so captive zeros are always significant. So where might we have a captive one? So maybe we've got something like uh, 3,000 and 82.7 seconds. So this one here, we've got the non-zero numbers. Uh, we don't have any leading zeros. We have one captive zero right here. It's held captive between a three and an eight. And so uh, because of that, then it is counted as significant. And the five check marks lets us know we've got five significant figures here. And then the very last place a zero can be, right? Either it's up front or it's in the middle or the last place it can be is at the end of a number. And if there's a trailing zero, then it turns out sometimes it counts and sometimes it doesn't. So trailing zero, zeros to the right of a number, uh, they count if there's a decimal point. So I'm gonna write DP for decimal point. Um, otherwise, uh, if there's no decimal point, we ignore them. So what would be an example of a trailing zero uh, that is counted versus one that is not counted? Um, so if there's a decimal point, we count it. So for example, if we had something like, um, I'm in eraser mode here, so 3, uh, 1, 0, point 0, maybe something like that. And we could use amperes maybe. So this would be a good one. So the 3 and the 1 are uh, non-zero, so they always count. There's no leading zeros. There's no captive zeros. There are two zeros on the end, so those are our trailing zeros. And uh, do they count? Well, if there's a decimal point anywhere in the number, it uh, doesn't matter if it's before or after those trailing zeros, uh, then they are counted. So that would have four significant figures. Um, otherwise, they are not counted. So for instance, if we had a number uh, that was trailing, so uh, something like uh, 300 uh, or 3,100 maybe, uh, maybe that is amperes as well, then we could go ahead and we could say the three and the one count, and the zeros that are to the right of the number, they are not counted. So there's no decimal point in that number at all. I mean, there's an implied one right here, but if it's not physically written out, then it's not counted. So that would have just two significant figures. So two SF for short. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a few ones to uh, try your hand at. So what happens if you had something like um, this maybe uh, in terms of kilograms and maybe you had something like 0 0.00100 uh, mole and maybe you had something like uh, 0 
zero nine zero um, amperes. So count the number of significant figures these have and uh, pause the video here in the next couple of seconds and then I will just go ahead and go through it. So you should be pausing the video now. Okay, and now you can unpause it and I'll go through it together with you. So anything that is non-zero counts as being significant. So the three and the one and the eight are significant. Um, any zeros that are before are never counted. So there's no, cap no sorry, there's no uh, leading zeros here. And uh, are there any captive zeros? These zeros are held between an eight and a one. So they are captive. They are always counted and there's no trailing zeros. So this top one, actually every digit we wrote is significant so we would have five um, if we go to the next one we can quickly go ahead and say the one is definitely significant there are two other places a zero can be if they are at the front of a number if they are leading they are not counted so uh, we are not going to count any of these sometimes people are like well if it's after the decimal point does it count and the answer is no any zeros that are before a non-zero digit those are just padding and none of them are counted at all. So you don't count these two any differently than this one here. Um, zeros that are sort of held captive, we don't have any held captive. We got zeros at the end, and because there's a decimal point in the number, uh, those zeros on the end are actually considered significant. So we've checked three numbers here, three digits, so three significant figures. The last one, we got an eight and a nine. We definitely count those. And we've got three different kinds of zeros here, so that's a little bit of fun. So these are the ones that are uh, let me see, the first ones are captive, so that one's definitely counted. Um, and then uh, the one at the very front there, that is a leading zero, and uh, it is never counted. And the one at the end is only counted if there's a decimal point in the number. So because there's a decimal point, we count that one, and so that gives us four significant figures. So uh, pat yourself on the back if you got all three of those correct. Good job. A couple of other gotchas here. If you have an exact or a defined number or an exact or a defined measurement, things are a little bit different. So, for instance, there are exactly seven days um, in one week. So you might look at these two numbers here, this one and this seven, and you might say, oh, there's just one digit, so uh, it's one significant figure. But it turns out that it is exactly, uh, precisely, uh, completely known. Every digit is correct, right? There is not just one significant figure. It is not... Uh, somewhere between six and eight days in a week or between six and eight days in zero to two weeks, right? It is exactly seven days in exactly one week. And so uh, what we normally do is we use that infinity symbol. So it looks like that eight on its side. And the idea is you can draw it and you never let the pen off the page. You can just keep going on. There's no start. There's no end. So it has, if you like, an infinite number, an amazingly large number of digits. And it's the same with the one week there. So it is exact. So it has an infinite number of significant figures. Um, you also have numbers that are counted. So for instance, if you have a hand uh, that is poorly drawn, you have very spiky fingers. And if you consider a thumb a finger, there are exactly five fingers on your hand. And so again, this is counted. So this has the number five has exactly five significant figures. Sometimes this comes up if you average, right? If you take three measurements and you add them up and divide by three, because you had three things that was counted, that three would be infinitely exact. So it would have an infinite number of significant figures. A couple of other things. So, uh, so one inch, uh, we will see in the later section is 2.54 centimeters. This is defined. So uh, these are exact right so they are defined in legal code so whatever country you're in right we normally define one inch as exactly 2.54 centimeters it's not three significant figures right or one significant figure every digit counts so if it's exact or if it's defined it has an infinite number of significant figures